Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I've been waiting to do this video for months and now I have finally the time and everything I need to go ahead and do it. So without further ado, welcome to the largest disc throw down I've ever done. It's the latest in my series. This is disc throw down nine. And it's gonna be special in that it's not just seven discs, there are seven putters and they're all seven one speed putters. So these are your approach discs. Typically aren't used so much for putting, they're typically more used for approaches and they have different um, uses. You know, some are uh, have more glide, some have less glide, some are more stable, some are less stable, etc., etc. But essentially, people buy these not just for like a cult factor of having like a certain type of one speed disc, but because it's useful and they can use it on the course for approaches and upshots and specific targeted throws, or even in some cases off the tee or special rounds or tournaments with them. With that said, I'm gonna march you through the seven discs that I have, but I'm gonna do it by manufacturer. So first, uh, I'm gonna start out with the three that I have from one manufacturer, it's Innova. I have the Halo Star Polecat. I've got the Halo Star Sonic uh, uh, by Innova. This one, uh, Garrett Gerthy signed for me at Texas States. Thank you, Garrett. And I have a Birdie in DX plastic, and this I've actually had longer than most of the other discs. In fact, actually, this is the oldest disc I currently own out of all of these. Um, I do have a DX Polecat that I've owned, that I picked up the same time I got this. Uh, my friend David gave it to me. With that said, let's go to the next set of di uh, discs. You knew it, you knew I was gonna bring it out, the Glitch. The Glitch has returned to my channel, and this is one I bought from Houston Darts Disc and Games, and this is uh, uh, what I'm gonna be using today as a test. I've got the Berg. Uh, this is the Eric Oakley Bjorg <laughs> uh, edition. Uh, as soon as I saw this for sale, and I've always been a fan of Eric Oakley, I had to pick it up, so I purchased it, and this actually has been the closest out of all these to, into getting into my bag, my regular bag. Uh, uh, typically uh, because it's different unique nature than typically most of these because it's relatively overstable and then the last two here are both in glow plastic this one is another uh, uh, favorite of mine uh, it's the Lone Star Armadillo often just called the Dillo this is in their uh, Bravo glow plastic or I don't sure if it's Bravo technically but whatever their glow plastic is is that's what this is and I've used this in all my glow rounds whenever I play at night and last but not least, the Loft Hydrogen Luft. Um, this one also is a, uh, a very neutral, straight one, similar to some of these. And uh, I've heard a lot about this. It's certainly got a different feel from some of these others, and it's got a little bit of a niche use. Uh, with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and explain uh, how I'm gonna do this uh, test here. So I'm gonna play a part two course here at Timberlane Park. Uh, on the north side of Houston. This is a heavily wooded course. It starts out in the open, but it quickly uh, uh, gets into the woods and a lot of what you're playing is in the woods or into the woods or out and in, so forth. Um, this, uh, in this case, I've got two cameras here. I've got my Sony Handycam. This is what I was first recording videos on my channel here um, many years ago, three years ago. And then I've got my GoPro, which it'll be on this tripod I'm currently uh, using there. So I'm gonna set up the GoPro here near the basket as a catch cam. I don't know how much footage of that I'll use, but when possible, I will try to use it. It's also where my audio is coming from. And then this is what I'm gonna be using uh, from the rear uh, to film me throwing. So this camera will catch me throwing and this will catch the actual discs <laughs> as they go towards the basket. Keep in mind my goal by default is not to make it into the basket it's to make it close to the basket and i want you guys to see how these will fly and the range will be as short as 66 feet but no more than 166 i'm guessing most of mine will be in the 133 um, uh, to 66 range uh, because i think that's where these shine i think that's where most of these are used and so with that said i'm going to go ahead and get set and we'll go to hole one okay we're going to start things off with the birdie i'm exactly 66 feet away from the basket all I'm going to try to do, given the strong right to left wind, is get it close. Now I'm going to try the pole cat. Now I'm going to try the sonic. That one actually flipped up a little bit. Okay, now we're going to try the glitch. Now I'm gonna try the Berg. Okay, 
Okay, let's try the Dillo. Last but not least, let's try the hydrogen. Okay, I'm going to retry the Berg because I I uh, shanked it on the first one. So there we go. That's at least a better attempt. Okay, with the exception of the birdie that I shanked that first time and the second time, I didn't really do it as well. All these discs basically landed really close to the basket and they didn't have too much ground play which is pretty good uh, given the terrain is somewhat uh, skippy okay now we're on hole two uh, this is commonly a uh, very tight wooded hole that frequently has people ending up deep in the woods i'm not able to simulate that quite as effectively with the current setup that said what i'm going to do here is demonstrate i'm approximately 83 feet away from the basket so now i'm going to I move the birdie to the back of the line and I'm going to start out with a sonic and we're just going to get it close to the basket. That's pretty good. Let's try with the pole cat now. Ooh, okay. I'm going to have to make adjustments there. That said, it's flying as expected. Now let's try the glitch. I went a little high with that. That said, it looks like an easy putt. It's so easy to, to goose the glitch. So let me try the same thing, but with this Berg and let me see if it'll, yeah, there we go. I even put it a little lower under the basket. Okay, now we've got the Dillo, same thing. Okay, I got lucky it didn't hit the tree. Hydrogen, this one is really floaty, kind of like the glitch in my experience. There we go, easy putt. And now the birdie. Potentially the slowest of the discs outside the berg. Oh yeah, nice. Okay, let's see where these ended up. The Sonic and Polecat, two peas in the pod. They both bounced off the tree and ended up there. We've got the Loft Hydrogen again, Bullseye, Dillo, Berg, Right next to it, the birdie, all very close and easy putts. That said, the glitch, I did uh, juice it a little bit, and so it went a little farther than expected, uh, but that's still probably a decently makeable putt. Okay, unfortunately, we've reached hole three, the hardest hole on the course, um, early on in the round. With that said, I'm gonna lead with the uh, pole cat here, and um, approximately 100 feet away from the basket, I'm gonna presume this is my third throw, because generally speaking, that's about as good as I can expect to get here on this course, uh, on this hole. All I want to do is get it close. Peach, aka Park Job. Now I'm going to try with this glitch. One thing I've noticed with the glitch is uh, it's soft neutron plastic, but this one has always been warped a little bit. I just I've never been able to flatten out, even in the sun, putting something heavy on it. So it's possibly a little bit less stable than it normally is. Put a little too much height on it. It sat on the other end of the glide scale and probably the most stable of the current putters is my Berg. Let me see if I can adjust. Ooh, I uh, fluffed it a little bit, but bullseye. Hard to remember the order, but got the uh, Dillo. That's next. This one, yes. I've got a lot of experience with that one, so I'm used to it. Now I've got the loft. This is a little more floaty than the Dillo. Now we've got the birdie. This is the least aerodynamic of the putters. I put too much on it. Fortunately, it's inbounds, but it did go a little longer the basket. And now the least stable, the Sonic. Yeah, that thing actually flipped up. Now let's take a look at where my disc landed. The Sonic got a lucky kick and landed there despite flipping up. It hit a tree and was close. The glitch, despite my best effort to juice it, I went to the right place. The pole cat under the basket, the dillo under the basket, the berg really close. That one was basically untouched. And the hydrogen also extremely close. And the one that I juiced because I don't have the uh, 
the power level down on uh, you know switching up between all these putters is the birdie still a great throw it's inbounds and I've got a putt okay we've now arrived at the upshot off of hole four this is one of my favorite holes on the course uh, you have to basically throw a shot that curves around I'm going to pretend that the, the disc made it most of the way around but maybe hit a tree and uh, landed here again I'm approximately 66 feet away from the basket um, it's very wooded it's a little bit congested back there so I don't want to go too far so uh, next up is a glitch again I'm just going to try to go close enough to get a putt okay that'll work oh yeah that's bullseye bullseye's edge and you notice with the glitch, I actually put in a little bit of hydro. That's not because I'm afraid it'll flip up because my throw as a rec level disc golfer has a little bit of wobble. So wobble plus deformed disc uh, means uh, slight flip up. There, I could run that a little bit more. That naturally stabled out. Okay, had to wait out the airplane <laughs> above. Ooh, I got lucky there. Next up, the hydrogen. Perfect. And the birdie, this is aer not aerodynamic. So I could put a little bit more on it, not as floaty. Now the pole cat, just a little bit more floaty, a little bit more aerodynamic. This is the second least aerodynamic disc in their lineup, the birdie being the most unaerodynamic end of a disc. Right next to it. Last but not least, the touchy boy, the Sonic. A little bit of hyzer touch a flip up perfect this looks really good every one of these is within the bullseye uh, birdie polecat sonic dillo hydrogen this berg is on the outside maybe 15 feet out but that's a, a no effort putt for me and the glitch is about 12 13 feet out not bad Okay, so now we've arrived at hole five. This is generally a tunnel shot that's straight through. It generally curves a tiny bit as you go uh, towards the basket. In this case, uh, I typically try to throw a putter or a mid about halfway. This is maybe a tiny bit more than halfway um, on the hole. With that said, I've got approximately 100 feet back. I'm gonna be throwing the Berg first. One side point, uh, it is definitely different throwing each of these putters. They all behave a little bit differently. And the most extreme is going from something like a Berg to a glitch, for example, or vice versa. So you have to really think about what you're doing. You can't throw the exact same shot with these, although some are closer than the others. Anyway, it's got a Berg, 100 feet. I put a little bit too much on that. I'm going to have to tone it down. That was like a 120 foot uh, throw with 100 feet. So uh, let me tone it down a little bit. Go with my Dillo. There we go. Uh, again, a little bit too much power, but that's where those discs are good. They tend to be less aerodynamic and they slow down greater. They slow down quicker. All right, loft hydrogen. I really got to be more touchy with this. <laughs> that was not touch that was luck again keep in mind this is a rec level channel this is a rec level review i'm a recreational disc golfer and my weakness is throwing but hopefully you get a good idea if you're my level or thereabouts and you want to get one of these putters again a little bit too much a little long maybe 15 long it's almost like I'm running it. I'm gonna to have to aim at the ground. I think my problem is I'm looking at the basket, so I'm throwing to it, which would be great if you're trying to throw in, but this is the middle of the course and you don't expect to try to throw in from 100, Sean. There we go. That's, that is the first legitimate layup that I executed. You have to focus on what you're looking at. And for me, it's the bottom of the basket, not the basket. Okay, arguably one of the most glidey of these. Uh, certainly the least stable. Sonic, again, floaty. Yes. Perfect. And I'm going to try to replicate that with this glitch. A little outside, decent. Okay, I have to say, considering I juiced the first half of the putters, here's the Sonic, here's the glitch within the bullseye. Right under it are the hydrogen and the polecat. And uh, the, one of the ones I 
I uh, juiced it a little bit was the birdie and the berg. The berg was the very first one I threw and I was lucky it only went this far thanks to the tree. And then the dillo. So it's one of those things where you could theoretically throw a little too hard even for these uh, significantly slower discs. And uh, uh, there's an element of touch you have to learn when throwing these two, not just the glitch in the Sonic. Okay, we finally reached hole six in an unfortunate scenario where my lie is here. It's obstru slightly obstructed 83 feet away uh, from the basket. I could theoretically throw here, but the way this scenario works is I want to try a forehand. As you know, I don't really have a forehand per se, but I'm gonna see what I can do just to get it close. Oh my God. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm figuring something out. Try the birdie. Ah, uh, nope. I'm re-throwing the birdie because I didn't do that right. <laughs> That's insane. Okay, here's a Sonic. I don't think I can throw this the way I can throw that. So maybe slightly more hyzer. Perfect approach. Let's try the Polecat. For me, that is fantastic. I'm not going to grab that <laughs> because that was good. And now the glitch, I have to treat the similar to the Sonic. Uh, uh, not the best forehand disc, especially if you're a rec level forehander like me. Potentially the best forehand disc, the Berg. Let's see if I can, uh... no, I didn't do that right. Threw it into the ground. Okay, as you can tell, here's the berg that I basically uh, uh, fluffed <laughs> into the ground. Uh, the other throws I would consider really good. Uh, this hydrogen was good. The dillo was good. Birdie and Sonic, uh, fantastic for me. Uh, and of course, I went a little bit long with this uh, Halo Polecat. That's about 20 feet out. And I got a little bit lucky with the glitch, considering this is probably the least desirable forehand um, disc that you want as a beginner uh, or to novice level thrower like myself. Okay, we found our way to hole seven. I've made a placement shot to about 100 plus feet off the tee to this landing area. The next landing area is actually in front of the basket. You'll see that there's a puddle uh, there. There's basically the ground um, bottoms out here and then picks up a little bit back there. So you have a little bit of a backstop if you want to throw it towards the bottom of the basket without going long. That's what I'm going to attempt to do now. Here's my hydrogen. I'm going to aim towards the bottom of the basket. I went a little too high. Not bad. Okay, now rolling back around to the birdie. Just past the puddle. Pole cap. Put a little too much on that one. Let's try the Sonic and remember that I'm throwing under 100 feet, not 120 like the Polecat. Just shy of the puddle. Let's try the Glitch. Treat it similar to the Sonic. Juice that one. Okay, that's rather unfortunate. Since this isn't a scored round, this is my channel, I'm gonna rethrow. Let's try to control ourselves with the glitch. As good as I'm gonna get. Let's try the berg. Let's try to go right for it, right for the bottom. Ew, but it's a tap in. Now the armadillo. I uh, threw that the way I should have thrown the Sonic. That said, bullseye. Unfortunately for me, things fell apart a little bit towards the end here. We've got this glitch here, which is just about 20 feet away from the basket. Sonic at bullseye's edge. Berg, five feet. From there, we've got about 12 feet. Bullseye's edge is the Dillo and the Birdie at 10 feet. The Hydrogen at uh, about 12, uh, yeah, that's bullseye's edge. Uh, and the only uh, significant uh, uh, one that I pushed 
a lot farther away was this pole cat. This is about 25 feet away from the basket because unfortunately I juiced it. Okay, we've reached hole eight and this is yet another layup play. Most of these holes you wanna play for par unless you have uh, good accuracy uh, for doing tunnel shots. Here, this is effectively a 70 foot uh, putt or very short throw that I would have done on this hole just to get to this landing area. This is preferable because of uh, the approach towards the basket is a little better. For these last two holes, I'm going to rearrange the discs in order of least stability or discs that I feel require the most touch to the ones that require the least touch. Because so I'm going to try to float these first ones in and maybe ramp up. That's the plan. That's it. I've got the, the Sonic. Nice. That's, I think it's in the bullseye. Let's again try the glitch. And I'm trying to remember, it only has a lot of wobble in the throws. I'm trying to cock the wrist back a little bit, try to keep it like this. About a slight bit of hyzer. There's also a pretty strong left to right wind that's still coming through the trees. It's very breezy out there. That's my best throw with the glitch in this round, I think. Hydrogen, again. Slightly less glidey, slightly more stable than the glitch. Oh, I fluffed that. That said, it skidded up, and I think that's at the edge of the bullseye. So I'm not, I'm not perfect, but this is what you would aim for as a recreational disc golfer to get close to the basket, because maybe you don't make a lot of 20 plus foot putts, so you want to be close. Halo pole cat, I can probably, let's just play it by ear. Okay. I absolutely will not argue with that. I, I felt like I put a little bit of hyzer in that, but that said, this is a slightly slower, this is the least aerodynamic disc that Innova makes at this time, which is what makes this interesting because there's nothing here quite like this in its own. Oh, I, I, I messed that up. I'll rethrow that. That said, I do think I've actually ha had the least success with this birdie. I think I've made more. This is my, what, third rethrow? I can't count. There we go. That felt much better. A tick more stable, particularly because it's in premium plastic. A little bit less aerodynamic, uh, a little bit more aerodynamic than the birdie. Uh, I actually kind of fluffed that one too. That said, it's in the bullseye. I, will, I won't re-throw that one, but I felt like I didn't give that one the respect it needed as a disc. And here's the Berg. This is the most stable out of all these. The, not the least aerodynamic, but it's pretty close compared to the Birdie. But uh, this is probably the most trustworthy, in my opinion, out of all these if you're trying to get close to the basket. Uh, I uh, made a mistake. I was trying to throw that flat. That said, I'll, I'll allow it because I wasn't trying to do the hyzer. I was trying to throw it flat. That said, good throw. Okay, I have to say, even though I really fluffed it with this loft, its aerodynamic properties allowed it to uh, go still far enough to get to reach the basket. It's bullseye's edge. Every one of these other ones are within the bullseye. Uh, even the Berg that I, uh, that I accidentally hyzered landed very very close uh the dillo is about 10 feet out and i have to say that was a really good throw okay so we're at the ninth and final hole it's a game time scenario me and my opponent sean are tied and he's parked he drops in his par because he's really good at throwing in he managed to get right next to the basket my second throw ended up here so for me to make par i've got to throw it in with that said, I've got the Sonic. I'm going to go ahead and try this first. Another throw in a tent, this time with the glitch. This time with the pole cat. Got to make it. Now with the birdie. Got to make it. 
boom. Gotta make it with the loft. Terrible. See, I'm a novice thrower. <laughs> That went long. Last but not least, the Berg. Wah. Okay, that was a fun round, although it took a little longer to record than I expected. <laughs> that said, uh, I want to uh, remark a little bit about all seven of these putters. Uh, and I'm just going to start from the least stable to the most stable in terms of my experience, not just here today, but in throwing uh, elsewhere. So first thing I'm going to say, this Sonic here, I think, is the least stable out of these. Even with a light throw in my hands, this would flip up. Um, I actually kind of like how it feels and how it throws. And I've actually had a, a number of throw-ins uh, with this disc. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it uh, overall. Um, I think this is probably the hardest of all of these to learn. Um, uh, to throw and to practice with it, although I think it's one of the best ones to teach you touch um, But I think this is um, really easy to find you can generally find DX versions of this um, in a lot of places They tend to restock those more often the halo version I think is the one I would personally recommend this halo star plastic is a little more stable a little bit more sturdy And will hold its shape a little longer my very first disc ever was a DX sonic that was underweight and it left me a bad impression uh, because it was almost most useless uh, in my hands, particularly starting out as a novice. That said, this is um, a sign by Garrett Gerthy. This is currently a wall hanger uh, uh, because I use different putters uh, for approaches, but I, I do like this one. This glitch is the next uh, mo uh, next disc up in terms of stability. The thing I like about this is that it's easier to hold and control. Uh, both forehand and backhand. Now it's only 153 grams for this one. They max out at about 155. That's what MVP limits them due to the design of the mold. Um, this one is probably the one I would most use as a catch disc to practice and warm up before playing a tournament. And, and I keep one of these in my car with me all the time. Uh, I will point out, as I mentioned earlier, this one is just, it's slightly deformed. It's a neutron plastic. I've always maintained it on a flat surface either in my car or elsewhere, but no matter what I do, um, it's just slightly deformed and that makes it a touch less stable. That said, the shape is really good and um, I highly recommend this for practicing and for uh, select usage on the course. Next up is this Polecat. I got this in Halo Star Plastic and I have one in DX Plastic at the house. It's a touch bit uh, lighter, 170 grams as opposed to 175. Um, this is decent as a neutral putter. It is definitely very point and shoot. It goes uh, where you want it to go. Uh, I generally would recommend this to anyone that wants to get better at targeted throwing within maybe 100 feet. I think the more skilled you become, the greater distance you can throw it with less wobble, and the more accurate it becomes, the more useful it becomes. Uh, in fact, I, I've known people even before this Halo Polecat craze who threw whole cats 200 plus feet because they love using it down tunnels um, or getting um, into tunnels or out of tunnels because they could guarantee that it's going to go where they throw it and they knew if this didn't do what was expected that it wasn't the disc it was them so this is very viable as a as a uh, throwing tool training tool and out of Enema's lineup I like that the most in terms of uh, getting around on the course. If I were to use uh, one of these three, it would be that. Uh, the next one I would use on the course would be the Birdie. This one is even slower. It's the least aerodynamic out of all of these. It's designed to sit wherever you, wherever you throw it. Um, it has the least amount of deviation that you'll get. And it, um, certainly out of anything any of has, and among these three, this I would say has the least potential uh, distance um, even more than the Berg. Um, that said, uh, I would not recommend this as much as the Polecat, although this is very grippy, very uh, good to use both uh, backhand and forehand. It's good for not going past the basket if you're, in, if you're really sold on the end of a lineup and you want one of these to trust to get as close to the basket as possible and not deviate. That's where this birdie 
uh, uh, shines, but I think overall the Polecat is the better disc that I think your average user would get. That said, I'd love to see one of these in lesser champion plastic, because I think that would be actually kind of killer, give it a touch more stability, and it would hold its shape even longer than the DX version. That said, this is probably the cheapest of all these discs you can buy. Next up is a Hydrogen by Loft. This I found to be also extremely point and shoot. This goes basically where you tell it, and I think it has greater initial speed like when you throw it it seems to in my opinion hold a speed a little longer but then it seems to more gradually slow down and helicopter down than any of these particularly if you have something like the birdie and you throw this real hard it tends to slow down as quickly as possible um, this is a little bit more light i would say it's more floaty and i would say outside of this glitch this is probably the next floaty but this is again very point and and shoot I love the way it feels backhand and forehand. It's slightly curved on this inside here, but I don't mind that at all. I think when you're using it for your forehand, it just helps you tell, I mean, you're, it's just in the groove really good. So I really love this aspect about the loft. I haven't um, been shining as much on this as so, say some of these other discs, but this is in my bag at all times in my glow bag, not just because it glows, but because it's very, I mean, it goes exactly where I tell it to <laughs> if I have the coordination to do it. You've seen some of the times when I have a really good throw and it's like a perfect kind of throw. This is the kind of disc that exemplifies the perfect type of throw the best in terms of you throw it and it does exactly what you expect. I think this is the most true of any of these discs in terms of point and shoot. You throw it and it does what you expect. It's not the fastest. It's not the slowest. It's not the most glidey. It's not the least glidey. It's exactly in the middle and i think that was their intent so i really like the ho the hydrogen and i do actually bag this next up is the dill yes indeed i do bag it because it is a glow disc it's in my glow bag but this is a little bit more stable and uh is a little more trustworthy in terms of this could theoretically be handled by the wind a little bit more but this is a little bit tougher i would say in terms of you throw it and it goes and has the least likelihood of flipping up uh, particularly like if you see my throws there's a lot of wobble this fights that wobble uh, better than most of these discs um, the birdie is decent for fighting the wobble but it just doesn't go as far this in my experience at least with this type of plastic will go a little bit farther than this birdie it's slightly more aerodynamic and i think uh, this will get you more distance and this i just feel like is more baggable this is something that I, it's less of a specially you know type of disc that you know you only use it once in a million years this i think is a more trusty in terms of uh putter that you would throw more often whereas this is very utilitarian for it's an edge case more of a tool um, but this is somewhere in between those those two in terms of that but uh, i like this a lot and it's obviously bagged in my uh, glow bag last but not least is the berg now this one here is in their k-line plastic and i really really like this a lot and out of all of these this is probably the one i would most likely to bag outside of innova just for the fact that it is so unique there's nothing exactly that innova has or dismania or most of the other manufacturers have uh, that that make a disc like this um, it requires its own sense of touch you can't just expect it to fly point and shoot as much as these it's designed to really not go that far but it handles torque better than something like the birdie i would say the birdie is just a touch less aerodynamic than this so it has less potential distance than even the berg and i know the berg is very popular for that but this has a level of stability and trustiness that i have with it more than even the birdie um more than any of these other discs and uh that's where i i set the berg I, uh, along this lineup. I think people that are unduly critical of the Berg don't really have a, a good reason for being so. It's a different level of touch. And that said, um, that's how that uh, works out. So what do I recommend as far as any of these discs? I recommend you buy one of them and you use it a lot, or you might even buy like four or five of them and practice a lot with that one. Find one that feels good in the hand that you trust when you throw or that'll do certain shots 
uh, that you need it to and just get used to it take five and you know take it to your putting league and practice throwing practice putting practice forehand and backhand and just find something that you like and run with it well that's going to do it for this massive disc throw down the biggest one that i've ever made uh, I hope you liked the video. Please subscribe if you haven't already as I have more unique and fun content on the way. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.